Now I'm going to introduce you to the concept of data normalization, so normalizing data. It's also sometimes called standardizing data. And I'm going to start with a motivating question. So let's say this is my height and this is your weight. So the question is, how does my height compare to your weight? Well, the units are completely different. They're in centimeters versus kilograms. It seems like totally ridiculous to try to compare these two. And the problem is that we cannot directly compare them because they are on completely different scales. And this is a problem we often run into in statistics and also just in science in general, that we need to compare quantities that intrinsically come in very different measurement units in different scales. So we need to normalize the data or scale the data. And the approach that we use here is by normalizing data into something that is more relative rather than something that is absolute. So now when you look at my height and your weight relative to these distributions of height and weight, then we can say, well, you know, my height is maybe a slightly higher than average or somewhere around average. And your weight is looks like, you know, halfway down the slope from average. So now, although we cannot directly compare centimeters and kilograms, we can compare a tiny bit above the, the mean with uh, a little bit more below the mean. So those are actually comparable once we normalize the data. Here you see an example. These are uh, data plotted in the original data units and they go from you know almost minus 200 to around 950 or so. And then I normalize the data, I scaled the data. Now what you can see is that the relationships across the data points are basically the same. So there's a lot of clustering up here. The data points are more sparse when we get further down. But now I've scaled the data so that the smallest data value has a value of zero and the largest data value has a value of one. Now, there are several different kinds of data normalizations. I'm just illustrating here one particular kind of normalization. Broadly speaking, we have two categories of data normalizations. There are uh, linear and nonlinear normalizations. Here you can see um, there's even another term that people use, which is transformation. So normalization, standardiz standardization, transformation, these terms are, th there are some subtle differences, but they're mostly used interchangeably. So the idea of linear transforms is that we can shift things around uh, on the x-axis here, but we're not really changing the shapes of the distributions. We're not really changing the relationships across the different data points. And that is illustrated in this plot here. We see the data is in the original scale and data in a normalized scale. And the fact that all these data points lie perfectly on a line tells us that rescaling the data here, because this is a linear transform, rescaling the data didn't actually change any of the relationships across the different data points. All we've done is relabel the x-axis here. So this is linear transformations. We also have a category of transformations called nonlinear transformations. And this is where we actually do change the shape of the data. So we really are changing the relationships between the different data points. We might start out with a histogram that looks like this to a histogram that looks like this. So now the relationships between individual data points has changed. That's a key difference between linear normalizations and nonlinear normalizations. We use these kinds of normalizations very often in statistics and whether it's appropriate to use linear or nonlinear transformations depends on the nature of the statistical analysis and it also depends on the nature of the data.